before you buy Extreme Rate Hole Clicky Kit. Kindly check the shape of the side, or the spring of R2, and L2 triggers, if it is BDM30. Use a spudger to open the DualSense faceplate cover. It is a bit challenging, so you must be patient and careful. We need to remove the two screws in the bottom of the DualSense faceplate cover. Then we need to detach the R1 and L1 buttons so we can remove the two screws underneath. Use a spudger to open the DualSense rear shell cover, so you would not scratch or damage the side of the shell cover. Disconnect the battery. Unscrew the battery bracket so you can detach the upper microphone. Detach the left and right trigger assembly ribbons. Detach the touchpad ribbon. Detach the lower microphone. Remove the two screws in the left and right of the mid-frame. Remove the two conductive rubber pads in the left and the right. Insert the extreme rate directional rubber pad and push the rubber into the holes of the directional buttons. Insert the four extreme rate tiny rubbers in the holes of the action buttons. There are two options in order for the Extreme Rate Hole Clicky Kit to work. Option 1. Cut off the green and yellow wires as seen in the picture. Option 2. Turn off the adaptive trigger in the console settings. Remove the three screws in the right trigger assembly. Remove the shell of the right trigger assembly. Pull out the pin in the right trigger assembly. Remove the gear components of the right trigger assembly. Remove the three screws in the left trigger assembly. Remove the shell of the left trigger assembly. Remove the gear components of the left trigger assembly. Pull out the pin in the left trigger assembly. Flip the PCB board so you can detach the conductive film. Be careful on the controller's speaker because it is magnetic. Remove the left and right conductive rubber pads. Remove the DualSense stock conductive film.
Place your BDM30 Extreme Rate Hole Clicky Kit carefully. Place the right shoulder of the R1 clicker carefully. Here is the correct position when you placed it right. Place the left shoulder of the L1 clicker carefully. Here is the correct position when you placed it right. Each extreme rate trigger assembly has its own marks of L and R, means left and right. Attach the shoulder R2 clicker in the extreme rate right trigger assembly. Each extreme rate rubber pad also has its own marks of L and R means left and right. Attach the extreme rate right rubber pad into the R2 clicker. Trim the black sheet and install it inside the extreme rate right rubber pad. Attach the R2 button. Here is the correct attachment of the R2 button. Attach the pin into the R2 button. Make sure the extreme rate right rubber pad is lined up with the R2 button. Check if the R2 clicker creates clicking sound when you press the R2 button. Put back the screws in the extreme rate right trigger assembly. Attach the shoulder L2 clicker and the extreme rate left trigger assembly. Attach the extreme rate left rubber pad into the L2 clicker. Trim the black sheet and install it inside the extreme rate left rubber pad. Attach the L2 button. Here is the correct attachment of the L2 button. Attach the pin into the L2 button. Make sure the extreme rate left rubber pad is lined up with the L2 button.
Check if the L2 clicker creates clicking sound when you press the L2 button. Put back the screws in the extreme rate left trigger assembly. Use the black tape to secure the left and right trigger ribbons. Place back the mid-frame into the front shell cover. Attach the lower microphone. Put back the screws in the mid-frame. Attach the touchpad. Place back the battery bracket. Attach the upper microphone. Screw back the battery bracket. Connect the battery. Place back the rear shell cover. Put the two screws back under the DualSense faceplate cover. Put the two screws back under the R1 and L1 buttons. Attach the R1 and L1 buttons. Place back the DualSense faceplate cover. Check the controller if it is working as intended. If you think my video helped you, please hit subscribe for the growth of my channel. Thank you.